What's up, Buttercup? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's bookish video is the top 10 historical fiction books you need to read that are not set during World War I or World War II. There has been a huge trend at least for six years, if not longer, where a big portion of the historical fiction books that are published and become popular becoming like the zeitgeist of historical fiction are World War I or World War II books. I don't care for historical fiction books set during the world wars. That's just me personally. And I think that a lot of people have gotten over that and they want more, okay? And I'm here for you, for you. Here's 10 books with a bonus that's not World War One or World War Two, but they're still fantastic and you should read any and all of them. Now the first one is America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre. It's a book about Thomas Jefferson's daughter, Martha Patsy Jefferson, a woman who kept the secrets of her father and who helped shape an American legacy. Perfect. All around. I laugh, I cried, I felt all the feels. Stephanie Dre is amazing, so you actually should just pick up all of her books. Some of them are actually World War One and World War Two. I'll read Stephanie Dre anything, but this is set during the 1700s and a little bit in the 1800s, so we are far away from World War One or World War Two. Number two, 1916 by Morgan Llewellyn, which is about the 1916 Easter Rebellion in Ireland and the after effects during this time. And that is the first book in the Irish Century novel book series. There are five books. So if you liked 1916, then you just follow it all the way up to 1999. Number three, The White Princess by Philippa Gregory. This is part of the huge Tudor series, which I've read all of them. I think there was it 14 or 15 books. I'm not saying, you know, read all of them, but or you have already done so because they've been out for a long time. I don't know. I mean, I think they're great, but specifically The White Princess. This book focuses on Elizabeth of York, daughter of Elizabeth Woodville. She's coming up next, just an FYI. And King Edward IV. She married Henry VII and was the mother of the infamous Henry VIII. But this book goes through her journey of the War of the Roses and then bringing peace with her arranged marriage. Number four, The White Queen by Philippa Gregory speaking, as I said of Elizabeth Woodville. This book is about her and I find her to be absolutely fascinating. She went through so much, so much. And she was also instrumental with bringing peace and ending the War of the Roses. Number five, The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spare. For those interested in young adult historical fiction, that's, I think it's like 40 or 50 years old. It was published in, it's either the late 50s or the early 60s. Yeah, it's a throwback moment, y'all. It's kind of like its own historical fiction uh, time stamp. We love to see it, okay? But this book, is set during the peak of the uh, Puritan society and follows the orphan Kit Tyler after she is accused of witchcraft because she befriends the lone woman on the outskirts of her Puritan town. Number six, Lily of the Nile by Stephanie Dre. It's the first book in the Cleopatra's Daughter trilogy and follows Cleopatra Selene who is Cleopatra and Mark Antony's daughter. I ate that series up. It's kind of hard to find anything about Cleopatra Selene or her three brothers. So I was really happy to discover one Stephanie Dre. That was the first series, just first book, first series that I've read of Stephanie Dre and of Cleopatra Selene because I did not know that Cleopatra Selene was the one that lived. Everyone else she knew that was related to her, other than maybe like distant cousins, they died or were killed. 
number seven, Mistress of Rome by Kate Quinn. The first book in the Empress of Rome book series, I think there's like five or six. I'm not the best at figuring out how many books there are, obviously, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But each book in the series follows a different woman, but they all know each other. So I think that's really fun. And it's set over a pretty long span of time. Mistress of Rome specifically follows Thea, an enslaved woman who's bought by the infamous and very spiteful heiress Lepida Polia. Probably pronouncing her name wrong. That's fine. She's a bitch. Who becomes even more spiteful when a handsome and famous gladiator becomes enamored by Thea and wants to free her and marry her. Number eight, The Swan Maiden by Jules Watson. I'm including this historical fantasy book in historical fiction. Sorry, not sorry. Because it's based on Deirdre of the Sorrows, part of the Irish Ulster series, but Deirdre's story is so well known. It's basically an Irish culture and therefore I wanted to add it <laughs> because it's not well known. I'm surprised. I don't think a lot of people know about this book or Jules Watson. She was very popular, but when the troubles ended in a little bit, you know, into the early 2000s, Irishness focused books became less popular and Norse and Scottish books became popular. So for a long, long time, Ireland was the big trend. So many people were writing about Ireland, but yeah, the trend really did last long. So I'm happy for that. But then other things took over Norse and Scottish historical fiction. And so all the great books about Ireland were forgotten. So this is actually a fantastic historical fantasy because it does show magic. And it is historically accurate in the sense that she could have been real or she might not be, but there are many other people in the Deirdre of the Sorrows story that were real or at least thought to be real. So how much of this story is real or not, we can't 100% say, but there were people that were real in uh, the Ulster cycles. So I'm including that. Thank you. Number nine, Demon Carperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This could be a controversial pick because historical fiction is at least 30, if not 40 years in the past, but I think the opioid epidemic in the Appalachians is extremely needed to be focused on because it's still happening in some areas and it changed whole areas really fast, unfortunately. But Demon Copperhead is like the Appalachian and better version of David Copperfield. Yes, I did say that. And Demon is an amazing character and you can still see the effects of the opioid crisis that started in and around the Appalachians to this day. I think people will look back on that and just be so incredibly angry about what happened that I'm counting it. Number 10, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which follows the awesome Evelyn Hugo, who's finally ready to tell the world about her life in Hollywood, starting in the 1950s and leaving the industry in the 1980s. And why did she do that? You gotta read the book, okay? This is peak Taylor Jenkins read. Oh my god, it was fantastic. Now, the bonus is Hester by Lori Lyko Albanese. And I say bonus because it's like alternative history, but it's not, it's, it's marked as historical fiction. Now, the setup is, what if Nathaniel Hawthorne was inspired by a real life affair and then created Hester from his book, The Scarlet Letter. 
Oh, snap. And the great thing about that, though, is Nathaniel is not the main character. It's actually Isabel, who was the, you know, supposed woman who inspired Hester. So we follow Isabel through her journey in Scotland, getting married to a really bad and really dumb guy, and then having to leave Scotland for the new world. And then, you know, the stuff that goes down with Nathaniel Hawthorne and just all the history involved in Boston and Salem and some other name neighboring towns in Massachusetts and it was so fascinating I really loved it but I'm seeing contention about if it counts as historical fiction or not so that's why it's a bonus thank you so much for watching my 10 books that are not World War One or World War II historical fiction themed that you need to read. I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.